I would like to divide today's workshop into a few segments. So when we develop an alapana, uh, there are a few things that will help us, you know, which I call as building blocks. Developing one's swaranyana. Basically, it is the ability to map um, a sound to underlying notes. Try to sing the pattern as an akaram and then sing the underlying swara. Ah, Excellent. We have the concept of Anuswarams, which are very important in Carnatic music. Sa, ni, pa. We are doing Sa, ni, pa. We are gliding the Ni from the Sa. The Sa is the Anuswaram here for the Ni. Second important way, which is very, very important to Carnatic music, through compositions. Typically, if you are going to learn Kalyani, you will start learning Kalyani Geetam. You will start learning, you will learn Kalyani Adi Talavarnam, Varnam, maybe. 10 kritis in Kalyani before you attempt the alapana. So, our approach to alapana is through phrases that we learn through composition. Na, 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 na. If I hear something like that for the first time, I'd be like, oh wow, that is interesting. Then I try to slowly say, what did that person say? Okay, that's a phrase that is new to me, something that I have not been singing in my own alapanas. Let me note it down and let me start including that. Varnams are also very, very important. Practice Akaram. Like if you take Kalyani Varnam. When you sling slow Akaram, you are going to really work on your voice control as well as your gamakam and your breath control as well. You should also do fast Akaram to train your voice to move fast. When you sing fast, then you will naturally curtail the gamakam. My guru used to ask us to practice kritis also in akar. So, for example, uh, For Arabi and Deva Gandhari. But Deva Gandhari does not stick to the scale. You will find Mapadani Sarisa. Mapadani Sa will come. Sani da ni da pa. Lower knee will come. Both the knees will come. Sani da higher knee. Ni da pa. Lower knee. Vega Magari. Sarima is what the book will say. But you will find Sarisa. So it is not scale based. Arabi will stick to the skin. It has its own unique gamakams, but it will stick to the skin. The first thing I would say is to develop a simple template. It's always a good idea to open your alapana with some very key phrases of that raga. So for Todi, for example, So that is a very important phrase. This ragam, more often that we give a lot of gamakam to the re. re. Sing that, Sai Shri. Re. Correct. But sometimes in the alapana, we may choose to give the re plain. Re. No, no embellishment. Sing that. Re. Correct. 80 to 90 percent of the times we give the oscillation to the re. So that oscillation adds a lot of beauty. Okay. Similarly, the knee. I'm still not done with my knee. On the other hand, if I do. Everybody is waiting for moving on to the next swara. So these are again techniques. Alapanas don't have tala, explicit tala, but the phrases do have a kala pramana. If you listen to professionals, they will vary the tempo. 
So you can sing as slow as you want or as fast as you want. Include brigas. When you listen to a raga, in your mind, you can try to categorize the raga into one of these. If it is a traditional raga, when I say traditional a raga which has been around for many years with several compositions in it, like typically these major ragas, Bhairavi, Todi, Kamboji, Kalyani, you have Mohanam, Madhyamavati, Hindolam, uh, you know, you have Sri Ranjani. These are all fairly common ragas again with multiple compositions. So when you have more compositions, it becomes a traditional raga in our system. Moving to modern ragas, when I say modern, it means Typically ragas that became popular or were invented post Trinity time. I'll give you a very classic example. Mohana Kalyani. There are multiple compositions, but not any Trinity composition is found in Mohana Kalyani. So you can see it is all very detail oriented. Over time we start developing and it is always a journey. And how does one improve the skills? Um, and in our BSA exams we have been doing, some of you have taken the exams. Um, you can see that um, we have a very structured approach where we develop your, not only your practical and your theoretical skills, we also develop your oral skills. Oral skills is basically developing that ear for sound. So I am going to sing this Vaya Mala Dole with one Apaswaram. So Kriti tell me what Apaswaram I am singing. Very good. So this is a skill we develop in our level 1 exam. The reason here is when a student is able, even at the beginning, level 1 exam students are typically people who learn, learn for about a year. At that level when you start developing your oral skills, then you are going to be able to attempt Manodharma with more confidence at a much earlier stage. One good practice that I used to do, uh, my gurus uh, used to encourage me to do uh, is to record my own singing and listen to it in an objective way. If you listen to your own alapana, especially with the manodharma aspects, you will find that you are able to spot some bad techniques that may have crept in. Uh, in addition to the akaram, you have to sing in a full-throated way at least for half an hour consistently on a daily basis. This template, I have done Raga Madhya Mavati. <laughs> Continue, sing from the notes. Sani Parisa. Excellent, Sneha. Okay, maybe we can let Sandhya try the next one. Try from Ni Papa Ma. From there. Ni Papa Ma Ma Pani. Papa Mariri Mapa Ni. Thank you. So basically, um, these are uh, you know short templates that um, I try to jot down and share with students, and we test this in our exams also. The idea is when you see something typed up like this, you should be able to sing out the swaram. And if you don't have these templates, easy is like pick the Varnam book, take a Varnam you haven't learnt and try singing it. I'm just singing this whole Madhya Mavati. Vidya Setunath had a question. I've been trying to listen to concerts. One of the things I notice is when a violin is being paid, played, I can easily tell what are the swarams they're, they're playing. But when somebody is singing, it's it's harder. And is that something... Uh, Actually, that... it's a very interesting observation. I think there could be a couple of reasons. Uh, I have not consciously thought about it that way myself. But I can... When you ask the question, right, it uh, set me thinking. One thing could be when you are listening to the violin, right, you are not having the lyrics interrupting your thought flow. Uh, for example, I am also subconsciously listening to the lyrics. Yeah, so let's wind up here. Thank you all for being so patient. I mean, you've been a wonderful set of students to work with and uh, I hope you all continue to practice and uh, work on these tips. Thank you all so much. 
Na 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 na.